Today we're going to look at what's new in Xcode 13.3 released today. So first up we have a couple new features being added to our Apple CLang compiler. So we have the C++20 and C++2B papers being implemented. Next we have a new opt-in mode that will better utilize your available cores, which gives you faster builds for your Swift projects. To check if this is already enabled on your system, let's copy this first bit here. Go to a terminal session, change this to defaults read. In my case, I already do have it enabled, so I don't need to run the command, but just to show that to you as well, we'll copy the whole command, run it, double arrow up again, and go back to verify that it was indeed set to one. We have some improved debuggability by enabling more breakpoint locations while running Swift Compiler and CLang. Next, we have the ability to add documentation for Swift code in executable targets like apps or command line tools. So if I open up Xcode, I have a command line tool project, and I created a basic function with one parameter and a return value. If I hold command and click on this, I can go down to add documentation. You'll see that Xcode is able to add documentation for any of this Swift code inside of your command line tools. We also got a ton of new stuff for instruments, which is a huge help. First up, improve the accuracy of leak scanning in instruments and for the leaks command line tool. So the system now scans object references inside multi payload enums, giving us more accuracy and precision in the leak analysis. Xcode now supports using ED25519 public key signatures to perform Git operations, which can be selected from the Accounts tab in Preferences. And code completion now suggests enum cases for if case. So back in our Xcode project, we have let result equals result try data contents of URL. And now we can type in if case dot success and you see that it, we do get an autofill here for success or failure. Storekit also got some upgrades for configuration files, so you can copy, paste, and duplicate products, subscription groups, subscription offers, and localizations, and a few other features. We have new Swift features that were added in as well, including the availability now of creating existential types written with the any keyword. So you can see from their example here, they have a generic function where you have a generic T conforming to a protocol P. And then you also have an existential function that takes a value parameter in that is cast as any type of protocol. So this any keyword helps distinguish between protocol conformance constraints and existential types. We can now use placeholders in type expressions and annotations, and the compiler can confirm this key type when you use an underscore instead of the type name. So going back to Xcode, we can create a new dictionary, let dict, and set the type here using two placeholders with underscores, and then set this equal to a new dictionary, and we'll just put a one for an integer as the key, and then the value will be salad. And we'll put two for the next key, and the value will be chips. And this error will go away. So both of our placeholders for the key and value were inferred by the compiler. And we can now write inverted code availability conditions. So rather than only having if available, we now have if unavailable as well. A couple other new features were added to Swift, including incremental migration path for data race safety. So APIs can now adopt concurrency without breaking clients that haven't adopted concurrency. We also can enable warnings about data race safety and a few other things. A couple new features in the Swift package manager and finally in testing in Swift. To see the full list of changes, I will provide the link in the description below to the Xcode 13.3 release notes. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great rest of the day.